this is kind of the the thing that'll separate like the 90th percentilers from like the 95th percentilers and above. Hunter, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. What's Woo! going on? Oh, you know, chilling out, Max, and relaxing <laughs> chilling on cool. Out. Chilling out. Uh, HR apparently hasn't heard our last episode, or else they wouldn't let you be back today. <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm we're glad. keeping it hidden from them. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thanks um, for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yes. We, um, we every day, jump into our car and start the engine, as they say in NASCAR. Uh, yesterday, as we're recording this, was the Daytona 500 drivers start your engines. Those guys think like race car pros. Today, we're going to think like MCAT cars pros. That's the idea. Um, think like a pro. That's the new series that we're going with. Uh, I'm excited. How does one uh, think like a cars pro? Um, first of all, like that was beautiful. That was like it's such a good intro and segue. That was I, I didn't even know the Daytona. You've done your research on this. That was <laughs> wonderful. Um, how does one be a pro? Honestly, whatever you did to prep that intro right now. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is so this is something that I get all the time. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who isn't familiar with me uh, or hasn't caught, you know, our episodes together or anything like that before. Uh, what's up? My name's Hunter and right. I'm a Blueprint MCAT tutor. I've been doing this for like 10 years. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's a long time. I've got a lot of gray hair. So if you're listening to the podcast, you don't have to watch them. That's good. Um, so you're yeah, saying Ryan, it takes I, 10 years to become a pro. Like, so. like for some people, it feels like that. <laughs> and it, it doesn't have to be that way. That is my number one thing that I want people to walk away from this feeling like. Um, so, so real talk, Ryan, I think this is probably one of the hardest things for students in general to just prep for because there's no content, right? And I yeah. know you're I, like, I'm a little bit more in the weeds when it comes to like day in, day out, like teaching and, and tutoring and stuff like that. But I'm sure you get tons of cars questions anyways, right? Yeah, all the time. It's, it's, it's like a nightmare for students. Um, yeah. Give us some gross formulas and like a list of organs to memorize. That's fine. Whatever. Krebs cycle, easy peasy. But give me a, sure. a, a paragraph about poems, a poem about poems even. And like, no, forget it. I'm out of here. Um, let me, I'm going to be such a punk. Let me throw it over to you for two seconds. Yeah. Why do you think cars is besides that there's no science? Like why do, why do students hate it so much? Uh, because there are people like us out here that say that cars is really hard for people. And so they take that into the test and <laughs> they, they live up to that. Um, uh, right. We, we have data that shows if the teacher says, Hey student, this test is really hard for people like you, whatever that may be, then they live into that. And so we're out here going cars is the hardest. And they're like, uh Oh, cars is the hardest. And, and I, I wonder how much is that that's true. Because I, I see this day in and day out where we have a student who, who uh, the typical kind of formula is an ESL student who uh, we, we know historically does worse on the MCAT because of their, their non-native English speaking mm -hmm. skills. But they're out there scoring 130s on the sciences and mm -hmm. they have like a 123 in cars. I'm like... No, 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 no. Like, you understand the MCAT. You have enough critical thinking in English uh, to understand what that test writer is asking and how the questions are presented. You are one who's living into this theory that cars is really hard for ESL students. And so you're sitting there during your car section going, oh my gosh, this is really hard. Yep, oh, yep, Ryan said it was gonna be really hard. Hunter said it's gonna be really hard. And then they do poorly. Yeah, I um, it's basically it's uh for all those psych so uh, students that are currently studying for that section of the test, it's teacher expectation theory almost, right? Um, but no, I, I can't agree with you more. And in fact, that's one of the things that I try to do more often than not with my students is start off by saying, "Hey, uh, my two favorite subjects are cars and physics, and those are normally and OCHEM is like the other scary one, but those three that's like the trifecta of doom for a lot of us, and it shouldn't be like physics number one." If you really understand the concepts behind all the equations and stuff like that, and you don't just wrote memorize, then like it's the most intuitive of all the sciences. Like balls roll down hills, you know, roller coasters do loop de loops. Like I know this, it's gonna happen, right? 
So the intuitive Dude, nature the, of physics. You, you can't talk about physics without friction on an inclined plane. Come on. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? Where's the normal force? It's perpendicular to the... Anyways. Um, so, <laughs> geez. Um, so, so yeah, I try to do that with all of my students is like make the worst parts of the MCAT almost like your best friend and like the best parts of it. And yeah. um, I, I mean, ask any of my tutoring students. I have this weird like pseudo masochistic relationship with like wrong answer choices on like full lengths and stuff. I'm like, Ooh, thank you. May I have another? Cause like it's, it's all mindset. It's like, yeah. you look at every question that you get wrong as like, okay, cool. This is an opportunity for me not to miss this type of question in the future. And Love like it. it triggers like a, a, like a reward mechanism in your brain. Then like, you know, it, it's the whole process is less painful. Um, same yeah. thing for cars. So I try to tell my students, I love cars because it is an open book test. First of all, and second of all, it's just all critical thinking. That's all it is. Um, what, what do you mean by I, open book test? There's it, there's no outside information. So every single answer and every question, it's all going to come explicitly from the paragraphs in front of you in cars. Like even if, even if, and I actually think this is one of the harder situations for a lot of students that are more inclined to, to sciences. If you're like a bio student, and you're reading a passage that's talking about like global warming or ocean acidification or something like that. Like you probably have a ton of outside information about this topic. And at this point, it's almost cliche, but everyone says don't bring any outside information to cars, even if it's a topic that you know, because if you do that, you're immediately going to be tempted for trap answers. It is 100% just the paragraphs in front of you. I don't even care if the author is saying that like, Ocean, acidi ocean acidification is uh, a hoax and global warming is really just because the moon is getting closer to the sun or something like that, right? It, it doesn't matter. It, it, that is law and that is the absolute truth for like the next 10 minutes while you're doing this passage. So the passage is everything in cars. That's the first thing I think a lot of students need to recognize is like, it's not so much reading between the lines or yeah. like, trying to assume what the author is thinking but just literally hey what do they say like what is paragraph one telling you but, question one but doesn't that make that's why it's scary is because it's in the passage i can't go and study my my uh mcat physics cheat sheet where i memorize the formulas and go oh this question is this formula let me just plug and play it's ooh, it's this huge wall of text that I have to understand. First, first of all, I, I think if if the MCAT, if the double MC was really nice, they would break up paragraphs into how we normally use paragraphs nowadays. Not the paragraphs are three to five sentences. But it's like every two sentences is a new paragraph. It just makes it easier. I wish, I wish, like hand of God or whoever, right? <laughs> if if the double AMC would allow me to format paragraphs in the in the MCAT. I bet you there would be a change in the car section to go, I want it, I want an extra paragraph here. I want an extra paragraph here. Oh, great. Now I can actually read it. I, I have noticed for me, and I wonder if there's potentially some accommodation stuff that people can research. I, I have, I don't have it down here with me. I have an e-reader, right? I, I have learned, um, I, I'm not a good reader. Uh, I didn't read books growing up. I, I never uh, read for pleasure. During med school, I really, really struggled with staying awake when reading, right? We have these huge textbooks that are just pages and pages and pages of like size 10 fonts that is like super tiny. So in there with a magnifying glass trying to read it all and, and it would just put me to sleep. And mm -hmm. regular books are the same way. So I, I listen to most of the books that I read nowadays, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, and I've started to enjoy more fiction stuff. What I found more recently with my e-reader is, oh, if I make the text really big so that there are far fewer words on the page, my brain doesn't get distracted. I don't get mm -hmm. discouraged um, with, with eye tracking stuff of like, oh shoot, where was I? And this and that. I could just scan. If there's like two or three words on a sentence and there's like five or six sentences on a page, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm sitting there pick, clicking a little button on the e-reader and I'm just like, yep. I can read it. I can understand it. So I wonder if there's some accommodation stuff that would, that may help students, uh, with that. Random that would tangent. Be, um, no, I've only looked into um, I've only looked into timing accommodations. I don't know anything about like font or anything like that. So let, let's like put a we'll we'll put a pin in that and talk yeah. about that next time. 
Yeah, um, there, there actually is. Like, I don't know if you know, there is there is a dyslexia font out there. And I use that on my e-reader sometimes. Um, I, I've never been diagnosed with dyslexia. I don't think I have dyslexia, but uh, it helps. It just helps like, keep my eyes where they need to be going. So I actually love everything that you're saying right now. Um, I, I, I'm i going through college. Very similar story for me, right? My undergrad like that. Um, I was ADHD and stuff like that. And so like, it was hard for me to same thing, focus on textbooks. I love reading for fun, but that was like, to me, it was completely different. But like, as soon as I was actually prepping for the MCAT, it would be two in the afternoon and I would crack open like my chemistry textbook or something like that. Um, from my set of 10 textbooks that I was studying for the MCAT, right? Because this was a very long time ago. We didn't have all the awesome stuff that blueprint has. (laughs) Anyways. Um, and like, honestly, it'd be two in the afternoon and like 10 minutes into it, I would immediately start doing like the, the woodpecker, you know, where you're like head bobbing and stuff like that. So I know exactly where you're coming from. And like going back 10 minutes ago to what you said, that's actually one of the reasons why I love ours and why like the fact that there is no outside studying required is brilliant. So like, number one, you don't have to fall asleep during textbooks to get a perfect score in cars, right? It's just, do you have of critical reading and critical thinking? And those are absolutely trainable skills, absolutely trainable. So what you were talking about with like uh, just going through paragraphs as a slog and like same thing, I would get distracted. I would bounce like, you know, my eyes would just dart. Like I would go to paragraph three for two seconds or something <laughs> like that. Or I would reach the end of the paragraph that I was currently reading, realize that I was thinking about some random thing about how like my wrist is cramping up or something <laughs> like that. And then like I didn't actually read the previous four like sentences. Right. Yep. So all of these things are like the common pitfall traps that like all of us experience, but none of us like have ever kind of, I don't want to say none, no extreme answers, cars, right? Yep. A lot of us haven't sat down and actually like diagnosed just like what are our bad habits and our bad ticks that we tend to do when we're trying to read this, especially when we're trying to read something that we're not interested in, right? Yep. So my next really big tip that just perfectly goes along with all of this after number one, don't bring any outside information. Number two, you have to try to make it interesting. That's like your first line of defense. We've got other Thousand. things if it, you, you just can't, yep. but like, if you can go into it and I do this all the time, my tutoring students make fun of me, but like I will read out loud in like voices essentially. Um, So like if it's like a nature-y one, right? I'll do like an old David Attenborough. I'm pretty sure I did my (laughs) David Attenborough on this podcast and I almost got banned for it. So I won't do it again, Yep. but I'll do like voices or something like that. I'll also, um, I don't know if there's an actual term for it, but I like sub vocalize and I actually like read out loud to myself sometimes. So that really helps me what you were saying, like stay focused on the actual words and just like the word that I'm currently on and maybe the couple in its peripheral, you know, the the next two in front. I don't do that like chunking thing that I, I don't feel like I, I actually retain much from that, but like I sub vocalize and almost like whisper to myself. And then it's like, I'm narrating a story and my brain follows stories way better than just like reading chunks of text. So like, that's the the big tip number two that's kind of like weird and esoteric is like you have to change the way that you think about these things and try to make the passage entertaining in some way yeah. or another. So so here's a um, the the quote that ties perfectly together with this. It's a it's a Walt Whitman quote uh, that Ted Lasso popularized. Be curious, not judgmental. Right? Yeah. I think so many people open up the cars they read that first passage and they go crap this sucks this is terrible oh my gosh i hate this topic Ah, like this is 14th century english writing and i don't like like don't judge it just be curious about what the words are going to say be curious about what potentially the test writers may pull from what you're reading and that small mindset shift. Thank you, Ted Lasso. Um, I can't. I can't wait. March fifteenth, season season three is starting. Oh, so so excited. Um, um, so I've been yeah. watching the Wrexham documentary to like get my soccer fix of like people I love. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. So so yeah, I I think I think that's a huge part of it. That's um I, I 100% agree with you. I um my first job out of college was I worked for a nonprofit for a little while and it was a it was the Arizona Science Center. It was like a children's education facility and that was the number one thing that I tried to instill is just like curiosity and like asking questions is the best thing in the world. And like it was plastered on the wall so on and so forth and I think I like internalized Ch- children's it. Children's like, education f- is this a juvie? Is that no, no, no. It was like a, it's like a one of you know one of those science museums. Oh, so, like four okay. stories. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was code word for for a. No, no, no. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, no. It's like an informal, you know, family comes and I would do like chemistry demonstrations okay. or like dissections and stuff. It was very cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. But, and that was like the first four years out of college. I was like pretending to be Bill Nye. It was rad. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm broke because it's a nonprofit. <laughs> um, um, no, I love that place. Best double AMC is a nonprofit. They're, they're not broke. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, double AMC. Um, you're not you're not making a young 20-year-old hunter feel better. <laughs> and no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. And like that, that kind of like mindset shift is super important, not just it for for cars, right? But like it carries into almost everything. It's what we were saying. Like, you know, every time you get a wrong answer choice, kind of be excited about it and train your brain to be happy. That way, like little things like that. If you just yeah. every time you get a wrong answer. It just like, it's like a, a knife to your heart and a gut punch. You're like, Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm never going to, Oh, yeah. <laughs> then like, and then you do that for months. You're just training yourself to believe right. it. So like yep. little things like that, you want to know one of the, the corniest acronyms that I used to have with my, my eight to 10 year old students learning yeah. about, you know, photosynthesis. Um, fail is an acronym. It's your first attempt in learning something new F A I L. So like I, I tell all my students, cause the question always is like, Hey, I watched this video. And then I did 10 questions on it and I missed a bunch of questions. What's going on? I'm like, nobody, nobody just watches a video and then has it memorized, right? Like the whole thing is like, you have to go fail. You have to go belly flop and fall face first. And then like teach yourself, why did I get this wrong? How am I going to correct it for next time? Like, it's like, it's Alfred, man. Like, why do we fall down Bruce Wayne? So we can pick <laughs> ourselves back up. Yeah, I got an impression in here somewhere. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you can adopt that for cars, honestly, it makes the world a difference, especially like, because the answer explanations are so intangible, you know, it's just yeah. like, well, the author feels this way and this is how you can kind of infer. And like, it's not hard sciences with numbers or anything like that. So you really have to have an open mind to read the explanations and like kind of change the way that you're thinking about it. You don't change the answer. You think it's the opposite. You need to change the way that you think so that you go, oh yeah, this answer does make sense. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. so be curious, not judgmental. Um, leave leave all of your outside knowledge. Any anything else that we're forgetting? Um, just I I really just want to do another example on the be curious thing because I do think it's so important. Like I was just doing a passage with one of my tutoring students over the uh, last week, right? And it started off, and it was basically like a, a hypothetical summary of. Tennyson's poem about grieving, right? And that's how the first two, three paragraphs start. You're just like, oh my gosh, it's awful. And then at the end, we're talking about dragons and magic and like people coming back from the dead. And it was super rad. Like it took a really cool turn at the end. And like me and my student, we were doing it together for the first time. And both of us were like, all right, so that that actually kind of turned out pretty cool. And then she rocked it. So you never know what you're going to get by the end of a car's passage. Um, it's like a box actually, of chocolates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Life is like a... A, a passage of cars it's like oh no everyone just jumps off a bridge <laughs> so um i do have one actual other like big tip if you're going to be a cars pro um and this one way back to what we were talking about in the beginning of this conversation with um there are no like when it comes to cars versus physics right physics oh i see there's a ball rolling down a hill they're giving me mass and velocity this is kinematics right whatever i see a circuit obviously this is electrostatics blah blah blah, blah. um you can kind of do that with cars too. And I would think this is kind of the, the thing that'll separate like the 90th percentilers from like the 95th percentilers and above, right? Is if you can read a question stem and go, okay, they're using these words, they're giving me this information and they're pointing me to this part in the passage. And if you can synthesize that in your head, like as you're reading the question and like the first 10 seconds, you already have a plan of attack because you go, this is a... AMC skill one foundations comprehension. It is a author opinion and they're pointing me to paragraph three. Boom. I'm going to get my answer in like less than 30 seconds. That kind of like training can happen. And like, that's, that's one of the other, that's one of the, the more studying parts of prepping for cars other than taking your time, going through each paragraph individually, training yourself how to read like critical reading and these really complicated passages. Uh, I'll summarize it quickly in your head and get through it and have a, a general understanding of it. Like those two other things I think are the really important. You marry that together. You're going to aces aces cars is going to be your highest score. Canadian schools are going to be fighting for you left and right. It's going to be great.